So hi friend, this is at the third part of THR lecture. In the first part, we understood the, the principles, the indications and the pre-op workup. The second had more to talk about the tribology, the implants, the lubrication of the wares. But you know what? What is a surgeon best at in operating? And if I have a person in my family and he requires a hip replacement, I will happily give the patient to none other than the man, Dr. Shekhar Agarwal. So sir, let's take us to the journey of a surgical technique and your pearls to improve the results of a THR. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mehra. So let's talk of the surgical technique in this lecture. What is an ideal approach? An ideal approach to the hip is one which maximizes the exposure. It minimizes the damage to the soft tissues. The approach is reproducible. It should have the best or the most accurate component positioning. It should preserve muscle function and it should be compatible with minimally invasive surgery, revision surgery or even be used as an extensile exposure if, if the need arises. You mean Basi to say it should be able to extend? Extend it. the incision above and below. Right. Now basically we divide the approaches between anterior and posterior approaches based on the position of the greater trochanter. So approaches which expose the hip from the back are posterior approaches. Approaches which expose the hip from the front are called anterior approaches. So you have posterior approach, posterolateral approach, you have dead lateral approach, you have the anterior approach or the anterolateral approach, the much talked of anterior transverse approach and the good old Chandli approach which was the trans trochanteric approach. So these are the various approaches that are used for doing a hip replacement. So the surgical approach you have to consider the approach that you're going to use that you're dealing with altered anatomy. You have to think if there was any previous surgery and then what are the patient related factors uh, uh, which are the systemic factors that the patient may have. So the surgeon should be aware of all the approaches. I would repeat that surgeon should be aware of all the approaches, but he should usually prefer one approach. He should master it and approach for and approach that approach or use that approach for majority of his cases. So I talked of earlier as well. The classical approaches are the anterolateral, posterolateral, and direct lateral. Then you have a direct anterior approach, which is being talked of today, and the two incision technique which has gone out of favor, I am just putting it on the slide, that is a two incision technique, you made a separate incision for the acetabulum, you made a separate incision for the femur and you married the two once you put the implants in. So that was the two incision technique and it is no longer used, so just to mention it, the two incision technique was used at some point in time. Which is your approach? My most common approach is a posterolateral approach or the posterior approach called off which is the uh, southern approach to the hip. That is the most popular approach used worldwide. I use uh, anterolateral approach when I'm dealing with patients who have fractures of the neck or femur or patients who have neuromuscular issues then I use my anterolateral approach. Now also when patients who have fixed big external rotation deformity, it may be easier to approach that hip from an anterolateral approach than a posterior approach. So, do you use the same approach for all or you individualize? You have actually given the answer here. Okay, I have. Basic idea. basic idea. But here are the pros and cons of each approach. That posterolateral approach uh, has a higher incidence of dislocation. Uh, the, with the modern technique, the incidence of dislocation is less, uh, very little heterotopic bone formation, very little limp. In the anterolateral approach, when you compare that, you have less risk of dislocation, but a higher incidence of heterotopic bone formation and the limp persists for some time, though at one year, the posterolateral approach and the anterolateral approach may be equivalent in terms of quality of ambulation. Okay. The trans approach uh, has a little higher incidence of heterotopic ossification, but the problem of trans approach is breakage of the wires or sometimes non-union of the greater trochanter. So this was used much earlier on as a very preferred approach, but most surgeons are not using this approach, which was the approach uh, 
propagated by Sir John Chanley. It is not used anymore in routine hips. In difficult hip situations like fractures of the acetabulum, it may be a very good approach to get a good exposure to the acetabulum. The direct anterior approach is gaining some popularity. Uh, and this is uh, called the intermuscular or and the internervous. Uh, uh, it works in the intermuscular and the internervous planes, and therefore it produces least problems in terms of dislocation, least uh, time in recovery, and uh, many surgeons are moving on to doing a direct anterior approach. But for all practical purposes, the posterior or the posterior lateral approach is the most commonly performed approach or preferred approach by most hip surgeons across the world. The indications, my indications for an anterolateral approach is a patient who is spastic, patient who has dementia or alcoholic, or patient has a fixed external rotation deformity such as ankylosing spondylitis, or a patient is a non-community ambulator. I may add to it that I would also consider using it for patients who require a hip replacement and have presented to me with a fracture of the neck of femur. So, sir, the anterolateral or the lateral approach has an advantage. It avoids the exposure of the nerve. There are reduced chances of AVN and the astral exposure is easy and comfortable. Hmm. So, basically, if you are doing head preserving surgeries, then you can do a dislocation without the risk of getting avascular necrosis. So that's a major advantage of this direct lateral or the anterolateral approach. And the disadvantages are higher chances of superior gluteal nerve injury. Absolutely. Heterotopic ossification. The trochanteric overhang may cause because various, various positions position. of the stem. And there is increased chances of or higher chances of anterior dislocation. Right. Uh, it also gives a limited access to the posterior column of the acetabulum. Because you're going anterior. Because you're going anterior. 